Now let us talk about the clinical features of JDM. The clinical features of JDM as the name says, there are two hallmarks, two things which are always present in these patients. One is dermatological manifestation and second is the myositis that is muscle involvement. So first we will talk about the dermatological manifestations. Dermatological manifestations, there is a table given in Nelson which says dermatological manifestations are present in 85 to 100 percent of all individuals with JDM. The onset of dermatological manifestations, rash is the first symptom in 50 percent cases and in another 25 percent cases, it be, rash comes along with the myositis or myopathic features. So what are the rash or what are the dermatological manifestations that we find? The first thing, the first type of rash which is considered to be the hallmark of JDM is a heliotropic rash, also called as heliotrope rash. What is heliotrope rash? Heliotrope rash is a type of violet pink discoloration present on the eyelids often associated with periorbital edema. So usually on the upper eyelid, sometimes on the lower eyelid also, there will be a violet pink macular lesion or rash appearing which will often be associated with periorbital edema in the affected eye. It can be unilateral, it can be bilateral. So if I have to show you a picture, this is a rash of heliotrope. It can sometimes be missed by individuals as well. It is more commonly easily seen in fair skinned individuals compared to dark skinned ones. So as you can see in this picture, there is a bluish uh, white or violet pink color discoloration which is present on the upper eyelid and it may be associated with some degree of periorbital edema as well. A few lesions are seen on the lower eyelid as well. So heliotrope rash is the first feature which is seen. The second thing that we find in these children is extensive photosensitive rash. Photosensitive rash which typically appears on the photo exposed parts. It appears on the photo exposed parts mainly the neck region as well as the back upper part of back in the form of patchy or diffuse erythema. This photosensitive rash, since it involves this region and this region, it is also called as shawl sign. So shawl sign is the second feature of JDM that you need to remember. So you may get a photograph like this. This is what the shawl sign is. If you try to see carefully here, can you see that there is a well-defined area on the neck and upper back the photo exposed part where this rash is developing. It is seen that this rash tends to appear because of the effect of ultraviolet light. So UV light tends to produce rash in the photo exposed regions which is a feature of juvenile dermatomyositis. Third, you will find that some of these children are found to have a malar rash on the face. It is also called as malar aridima, that is red colored rash on the face. If you remember from your undergraduate days, malar rash is also a feature of systemic lupus erythematosus, that is SLE. The key feature here is malar rash in JDM, it tends to involve the nasolabial folds also. So nasolabial folds are also involved, whereas the rash in SLE, if you find, if you try to confuse with SLE, it spares the nasolabial folds. So this is a very useful clue which can be asked in exam, how will you differentiate the malar rash occurring in JDM versus that seen in SLE. The fourth feature that we find, the cutaneous feature we find in these children is the presence of gotron papules. What are gotron papules? Gotron papules refer to atrophic or slightly you can say hypertrophic. They can be either atrophic or hypertrophic 
papules or patches which are seen on the knuckles on the proximal interphalangeal joint distal interphalangeal joint sometimes also on the elbow region on the knee and in the small joints of the tarsum that is tarsal joints so these small atrophic or hypertrophic papules which are you know uh, they appear dry they also show some degree of crusting they are called as gotron papules gotron papules if you have seen the picture you will never forget gotron papules appear something like this can you see these gotron papules present in this patient these are the gotron papules so they are atrophic or hypertrophic papules or plaques which are present on the knuckles pips dips and uh, they can also be seen on the elbow knee and tarsal joint so you can have a look here fifth feature which is seen in some of the patients of gdm is occurrence of mechanic hands mechanic hands is not very commonly seen in children but if they are seen they are strongly associated with anti jovan antibodies mechanic hands refers to a condition where there will be scaly plaques or rash appearing on the palms soles or the palmar aspects of the fingers especially along flexor tendons so if i have to show you a picture this is a patient who's having these lesions these mechanic kind of rash which is present they are also since they are commonly seen in mechanics who are working you know with instruments and uh, chronic uh, calluses tend to form these calluses tend to undergo atrophy and scaly rash may appear so that kind of a rash appearing in these children is called as mechanic hands mechanic hands potential mcq they are strongly associated with anti jo1 antibodies they are overall rare but can be seen in some of these children and other than this the other cutaneous manifestations like uh, erythema diffuse erythema can sometimes be seen in uh, elbows as well as the knee and ankle joints but they are not considered uh, diagnostic and they are not present in patients of gdm to keep it simple we'll not go into further details than this after these dermatological manifestations the second group of features that we see in these children are the cns involvement or the muscular changes we call it as myositis the myositis component myositis appears in the form of insidious onset gradually progressive proximal myopathy that is there is proximal limb weakness so proximal muscles are initially involved it tend it typically tends to involve muscles of the shoulder girdle of the hip joint that is hip girdle and because of the involvement of these shoulder and hip girdle it is found that these children have problems like initially it starts with slight lethargy later on it progresses to inability to comb hair so if you try to comb the hair the child will be unable to lift his arm and do combing on the affected side in case there is myopathy occurring on that side so there will be inability it is usually symmetrical in nature so it can happen bilateral so other hand also you cannot do it so there is inability to comb here there is inability to climb the stairs and inability to stand up from sitting position so they will also have a gower sign which is positive gower sign is something you have read already multiple times gower sign is a sign in which the child is unable to get up from 
lying down or uh, sitting position to standing position without uh, climbing upon his body. In Gower sign, the child climbs upon his body or takes abnormal postures to stand up. Gower sign was originally described in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, but it is now known that it can occur in any proximal muscle weakness. And uh, juvenile dermatomyositis is also one of the differential diagnoses for Gower sign. These myositis which are seen in these children, it is, you need to remember that it is associated with muscle tenderness because there is inflammation. So, there is associated with muscle tenderness in almost, in more than 50% cases. So, painful muscles are also present in some of these. Rarely, you may find that the muscle weakness or myositis may involve, there may be involvement of esophageal muscles and respiratory muscles. Esophageal muscle involvement will lead to dysphagia in the patient. It can cause increased risk of aspiration and many times, although not exactly clear, but upper respiratory muscle involvement or uh, pharyngeal involvement can produce a denasal voice as well. We call it as dysphonia. Respiratory muscle involvement can lead to progressive respiratory paralysis. So, to summarize, there are skin involvement and there is muscle involvement. Muscle involvement is in the form of proximal myopathy. There is Gower sign positivity. It affects shoulder and hip girdle commonly and it is associated with tender muscles. Other muscles which can be involved include esophageal and respiratory which usually portend a more poor prognosis as compared to if they are not involved.